I have talked in various videos about clutter-free kitchens, but I thought it'd be nice to kind of break everything down, put it in one video, and talk about how to have a more clutter-free kitchen. But the holidays right around the corner. I feel like having your kitchen kind of cleared out and with hosting and cooking, I think it's really, really nice to just kind of set that baseline. Not that you have to do all of these, but having some of these done makes a really, really big difference. So let's go ahead and talk about how to have a more clutter-free kitchen this holiday season. Number one, keep your countertops clear. I talked about this in a recent video and gave you some solutions, actually. I'm gonna link that because I really think this can be tough, especially if you're living in a smaller space, if you have a smaller kitchen and you need to utilize that counter space. And I think that's absolutely fine, but you can do it in a more clutter-free way, <laughs> a little bit more intentional, just keeping the larger appliances um, kind of tucked back and wiped down, kind of wrapping up the cords so the cords aren't all over the place. So try and clear off your counters. Now I have on my counters a couple, actually, I'm gonna show you what I have. I have a couple of decor pieces just to like brighten things up. And I also think this is fine. It's whatever you want to do. I do have to store my flour and my sugar on the countertop just because I have a small pantry. So I made sure to get these cute containers. <laughs> I call them cute. I think they are just so that it kind of adds to the decor element and it's not like an eyesore. So there are things that you can do. Don't feel limited or trapped by the lack of kitchen space. Um, there are things that you can do to kind of hack your space or work around it so that it feels a lot more clutter free, even though you have to use those counter spaces, but get them cleared off as much as possible. I thought it would be fun to show you what my kitchen looked like in my old house. I used to absolutely love filling my space with different decor pieces, seasonal decor. And uh, when I used to do this, I thought it was cute, but I was also really stressed out. My kitchen did not function as well for me. So here's a look at more what I have now since simplifying, and I'm able to use the kitchen so much more efficiently. My second tip is to only have things in the kitchen that serve multiple functions or that you use often. So again, I've talked about this, but like a cake pop maker, single waffle irons, it just doesn't make a lot of sense, especially if you're a large family and you make a lot of waffles, like try and think about how you use things and how often you use them. It's, you know, here's the thing, you get used to seeing what's in your space. So you might think like, I use everything in my kitchen, open some cupboards, just get in there and start looking and see what's really in there. Try and look really critically inside your cupboard spaces as if you were looking for the first time. Things get really camouflaged as we're used to seeing them over and over again. So open your cupboards, look for duplicates, look for things that you don't use often, and go ahead and clear them out. As you're able to kind of clear out the cabinets, this is extra room that you can use to get things off the countertop, which is awesome. You might think, I have absolutely no room in my kitchen. I'm bursting at the seams but actually you have, you know, <laughs> three kettles, two crock pots and four pie dishes and you can actually clear that out and then get your toaster into the cupboard. This is a quick little kitchen purge that I just finished. It took me about 15 minutes is all. I just opened up all the little cupboards and pulled stuff out. So I'm going to be making a run to the Goodwill to donate all of this. This is all good stuff that I feel like somebody could use. There's a crock pot in here. I had three crock pots. I had three of these. I had four pie dishes. So maybe start there, actually. Start inside the cupboard doors and see what you can clear out. And then you can start looking at your counter spaces and then work that way. Tip number three is gonna be organize your pantry. When I tell you I started in my kitchen, I actually started in my pantry. It was um, beyond messy. <laughs> it was an absolute nightmare to be honest. And it's a project that I put off 
for five years. So I understand when things are so overwhelming, you don't even know where to start because that was me. But start with one shelf, start with one bin, start with one small section and get your pantry cleared out, get it organized. Again, this just makes things flow so much smoother in the kitchen when you're baking and uh, it's less wasteful. I absolutely love having a more organized pantry. So just start small, five minutes, 10 minutes, set your timer and get to work. It's hard when you're throwing away food that has been shoved to the back, that got moldy, that's now being wasted, but that's actually motivating for the future. And you realize, oh my gosh, when things are unorganized, I waste more. All right, let's talk Tupperware. The Tupperware, if let me know in the comment, if your Tupperware is out of control or was like mine was, this is for some reason so tricky. I don't, it's like the sock in the dryer. The lids separate from the bottoms like socks separate in the dryer. It is crazy to me how this happens. So go through and make sure all of your Tupperware has matching lids and then narrow it down to three to five pieces. I think this is absolutely perfect. I like having a little bit smaller ones and a little bit larger, and I don't have very many. I got rid of most of my Tupperware. With the holidays coming, it is so nice to know what you have and to know that you can send guests home with leftovers or whatever, and you've got matching lids and you don't have to like rummage around in the moment. Plus it just, any any time you can get anything out of your space, it is going to make your life easier. So declutter whatever you don't need, your excess, and declutter any extra lids or bottoms. Trust me, you're not gonna find it later. You're gonna think, oh, but maybe it'll turn up. No, it's gone. Follow the one in, one out rule. I got this new kettle last year. It is so cute. I love it. It can be set just on the stovetop and look adorable as kind of a functional decor. We love tea. We use this all the time. But I noticed that I had another black one and it's one that I had gotten from the thrift store, which I love the thrift store. I find amazing gems there, but I liked this one better. So I went ahead and decluttered the black one. So try and use the one in one out rule. As you upgrade your appliances or get new items, Items, go ahead and declutter one thing. It doesn't have to be an even swap like a kettle for a kettle, but I just noticed that kind of following the one in one out rule in general is really, really helpful, especially when it comes to the kitchen where your cupboard space is so valuable. So one in one out rule, and this just applies to everything. When it comes to cleaning, you're gonna have your regular daily cleaning routine, and that I do recommend having is a cleaning routine, maybe one that you do in the morning and one that you do in the evening. For me, my morning routine consists of dishes, wiping off the counters, relocating items that don't belong, and if I have time, I sweep. The exact same routine happens again at night, except for I make sure the sweeping happens. If it didn't happen in the morning, 100% it will happen at night. So have a daily cleaning routine for your kitchen specifically, morning and night. Okay, that was one tip. Another one to go along with that is to choose one thing to do a day in addition to your daily cleaning routine. One day you might wipe down the backsplash, another day you might wipe down appliances, another day you might focus on the outside of the cabinets and wipe those down, another day you might go through your pantry and just kind of declutter and use up items that are going to expire, um, the fridge, going through the fridge, going through the freezer. These are things, mopping, these are things I do not do every day, but I like to do once a week. So create a schedule that includes these things and just do one a day in addition to your regular kitchen cleaning routine. I used to use my refrigerator as like an art gallery. I used to display photos and kids' paintings. I also used to have bills and special magnets, and this looked really, really cluttered. Or kitchen will feel cleaner with your kids, your fridge <laughs> cleared off. So go ahead and do this. It only takes a few minutes. Um, even store things on the side of the fridge, maybe where people don't see it, including yourself, as often can really help your kitchen feel less cluttered and feel just more clean in general. Let me know what you're gonna be doing today to help contribute to a more clutter-free kitchen. 
I need to go through my pantry. <laughs> so that is gonna be on my list of to-dos today. I'm gonna get that done. Please subscribe before you leave. I make videos like this every single week and I will see you soon. Bye.